Welcome back guys to the $24,000 challenge. This is the results of day number 20. I cannot describe in words how upset I was that day when this happened. I didn't think it was possible I was gonna lose um, not the, just the $40, which doesn't really matter, but that I was breaking even on EV for 10,000 hands. I played 14 and a half hours and it was pure torture. So for me to break even here, just to put this into perspective of my perspective, I can show you, you know, all the hands that I played in the last four months when basically these bank roll challenge state happened. This is by the way, the second time I ran like this. So this is basically what I'm playing at the mid stakes, PLO 50, PLO 100, some PLO 200 in there as well. And you can see that everything is fine. Not everything, like my game needs improvement and I'm working on it every day. At the same time, you can see that, you know, it is working out on the mid stakes and supposedly on the micro stakes, I am having a much bigger edge, which obviously I believe in. I don't think I misadjust to the micro stakes. I have a lot of things that I take notice of on the micro stakes that, for example, that I look in specific stats like the full to C bet and try to combine that with their VP IP and how that translates to me, you know, going uh, to my strategy. And therefore, I don't think, you know, it's like a misadjustment or some of that sort. And it's just insane variance. And that is just what it is at the end of the day. And I didn't think it was going to be possible. But here we go. I'm going to look at a couple of hands that I played. Uh, here I got aces. I obviously go ahead, go ahead and four bet. I do get called by the button. And the flop is 755. Five. I do get the money in only to see that he has a full boat. We're also going to look at some run good hands though, uh, as that is clearly unavoidable. Here I got aces, uh, four way, and here we already have the best run good hand of the entire 10,000 hands. Um, somehow I managed to be up against jack seven and a seven in this board. And now all I have to do is click the bet button three, two times, and they already get all the money in. And this guy has to overcall here with a seven. And uh, there we go, $30 pot going over to the bank. And that was the biggest pot of the day as well. Here I got aces one more time, going into it and uh, just call the three bet. Here I do think we're a bit too deep with these aces even, uh, cutter versus button. I also don't think I'm gonna get five bet enough and the SPR is gonna be too high. And I elected to just call the, the three bet and take it from there. Also did then check raise right away on the ace nine eight board. Very drawy board. I certainly don't want the action to be killed in case he's got top two pair and a gutter and so or something or top bottom pair. And he just calls on a turn. There's a queen rolling off. He makes a straight. Unfortunately, not much I can do. And he takes down the pot. By the way, not a good three bet on his behalf. And uh, he just got a little bit lucky there. Don't three bet queen, queen, jack 10 uh, at this sec depth. It's a hand that you want to call with basically. Here I do squeeze is queen 10, five double suited. Do just get called by two spots. And then on the flop, I do I like to check my not flush draw. Could also bet, but I think checking is completely fine. Uh, against two opponents, especially because, well, there's a lot of trips out there and don't want to just bet call it right away. I can certainly try to value bet my flushes on a later point or for example, hitting a top pair as well. So here I do bet a little bit more than half pot, get called, bet the jam the river, because I think if he had a boat uh, up to this point, it's too likely he would have bet before that, any seven, nine, any seven, five, very likely steps and uh, before that. And I think there's a bunch of flushes possible, given that the ace and the five of spades, um, he could uh, you know, have all the medium flushes, jack high, 10 high, uh, queen high, king high. So there's too many flushes out there I can get value from. I can get value from here, from a king high flush. Here I got ace and nine four double suited. Get called by two players and we do flop the nuts. Go bet. Get called by two players on the turn. I bet one more time. Not that big. Um, trying to get called by, of course, flushes and occasionally they're gonna have a set, but I think they're also, I blocked the set by the way, and uh, by, I have top two pair and the nut flusher, so I don't have to be afraid of 
getting out drawn here i can just bet a little bit smaller than if i just had the nut flush drawn. Um, and the texture also doesn't really make them have so many sets on the river i get the rest of the money and take down a nice pot of 230 big blinds uh is queen queen eight here is going to be of the hands that i actually misplayed not the four bet um we will see that this min three betting was actually a pattern uh, nolan is also in the pillow mastermind and he saw me streaming and he thought he's mixing up a little bit here with some min three bets i decided to four bet um, ace queen queen eight which is definitely not my standard um, then he calls and then here I actually on the flop I make a mistake I butcher the flop sizing which should be if I want to bet with a heart in my hand I should bet a third and then bet fold um, here I bet a little bit too big and on a turn created this SPL one where I ended up hero calling with an eight blocker and an over pair on an SPL one where I need 33 percent and when he plays hands like these this way then I don't think I'm gonna probably end up with more something like 20 to 25 percent of equity um, on this turn card in SPL one so i'm not getting the right price with my exact hand if i have aces here then i think i should be calling especially of course with a deuce three or four um, and of course with a five i would have the nuts and i wish i just bet much smaller in position and i should you know heavily do that with blockers and then also check back hands like these this hand here i should have checked back even with the heart i think checking back it's a little bit better and uh, even though the SPR is two, and this is a very unlucky situation, I certainly want to make sure that I play these spots right uh, in the future. Here, um, also a little bit of a cooler here. I bet the flop with a bottom pair and a nut flush draw. Uh, could certainly also check back this here. I think these two players in particular would stab with um, if they had a good hand on the turn. I do decide to bet uh, one more time with trips and nut flush draw. He checked min raises. And at this point, I already um, would factor in hot stats. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I can uh, look at and what I can deduce from that. So this guy plays about 70% of hands. He cold calls us a lot of hands, 54%. And uh, because that is true, I don't think it's just solely going to be kings. That's min check raising here. Um, sometimes it's also still going to be trips. It's going to be some combination draws and later on i saw that he made some really weird plays as well overplaying hands massively I actually won it back from him multiple times um because he was playing way too loose um, i just called a turn and on the river uh, because there's no hearts and nothing really getting there except for maybe ace three i do end up making the call for the the last four dollars as well if everything gets there like a very specific card um which one could it be for example the king of hearts i will probably just fold so i wanted to give myself the option to still fold some rivers that are really bad for me um, but this one i ended up calling and um, somewhat okay with it against this particular player against others i would just fold the turn bet for the turn or then also look at my flop step and uh, maybe even you know just check back there and play more gto uh, than just trying to you know Blow the pot against inferior draws, which was basically what I was trying to do with the nut flush draw bottom pair there. Here I do have the nut flush draw and uh, an over pair and a gut shot, I bet. And then this guy surprisingly plays 88 2 uh, um, on a sample of 170 hands. He just joined the table and um, I had had him on, I don't know, 60 0 or something. He didn't play like every hand at first. And here's some Switzerland. And I thought that, you know, even a player like this would have jack raised a flop with top set, which is more important later in the hand. So on a turn, I bet one more time, called by both players. And this did, at this point, I think, yeah, that both have either a flush or sometimes, you know, a straight or some two pair and, and, a, claw, uh, and a spade still. And then on the river, there is not that much money left behind. Actually, it's just a third of the pot and the board, unfortunately, pairs. Now, this player moves it in. And I've seen this countless times on micro stakes. People move it in here with, you know, queen eye flushes, jack eye flushes. And I don't want to incorrectly fold when I'm getting one in five on a call. So I do make the crying call, even though it is, yeah, sometimes it's going to have kings. I was super surprised because who i'm about his exact full house i was expecting more something like an eight nine type of hand uh some three pair ten nine eight and certainly not kings because who the fuck doesn't check race on the flop 
when somebody bets, somebody calls and you can just rip the money in with top set on a super draw heavy board. Uh, I have never seen someone not do that in the last 20, 30,000 hands or so. So it's super surprising to me that someone ends up playing this passively um, in this spot. And uh, unfortunately I get, you know, that pairing river. Yeah, which, yeah, on a 10 or a king, maybe I could make a fold um, because then they probably don't move it in with queen, I jack, I flush is less likely. But on those bottom pairing cards, I think that's just happening way too often. So this is basically the hands that happened uh, for the most part. These were the, some of the biggest spots. There's certainly some other ones as well. You can see that momentarily gained some momentum, but in the end, it wasn't really my day. So it turned out to be the worst day so far in micro stakes for 10,000 hands on plus intense. And by the way, we raked about $150. So 15 buy-ins, almost 15 big ones per 100 were just washed away by rake. This is absolutely insane. Didn't think it was gonna happen that way, but peel of five intense and is the most uh, toxic um, limit that you can play. And you certainly wanna be careful about rake. You wanna play super rake efficient. It's gonna be one of the most important factors um, to maximize your earnings on five cent, ten cent, as spe specifically when you go to ten cent, twenty five cents, the rake is going to be capped at some point when you go very deep against your opponents. For example, if you're three and a big one steep, it's going to be a lot of pots or at least few pots where you can save some dollars uh, on rake because you you just stack some more three and a big blinds, and that's certainly going to uh, increase your bottom line by let's say three big blinds per hundred, which is uh, nothing to sneeze at, I would say. So I hope you guys enjoyed this short review of the bankroll challenge. I'm gonna be back, hopefully before heading to Rosodov, which is beyond the 12, maybe I get one day in, um, but uh, otherwise I'm gonna be back in November with the bankroll challenge. Thanks for watching and see you for the next one.